Hi all, I have another fascinating game of Paul Morphy to show you. It was with Knight Odds against Aureliano Medina. Morphy kicked off with E4. We have E6, which is a French defense, of course. And it's interesting here that Morphy plays F4. Uh, this is generally regarded, if you weren't a knight down, as not the greatest approach to the French defense. Uh, if it was a normal French defense, because after d5, e5, black usually has a comfortable position on the light squares like f5, and quite often, you know, establishing a knight outpost there with h5. Uh, so, what would be the advantage for white in this kind of position? Well, logically, it's actually the dark squares are potentially quite good for white. If you look at these pawns, they're all already sort of eyeing dark squares. Uh, and we'll see that this strategy of trying to take over the dark squares in this game. Bishop c5, d4, bishop b6, bishop e3, knight e7, knight f3, knight f5. That is a knight, nice knight outpost. And perhaps h5 should be considered at some point. Uh, we see queen e7 threatening queen b4 check. That's parried. c5, so black is also hitting hard that d4 dart square but uh, now this knight is kicked and actually white is taking control for a moment of this diagonal queen c7 h3 supporting that pawn knight c6 bishop e2 c takes c takes bishop a5 check this isn't such a major inconvenience the king can go to f2 and now a3 so we have more pawns on dart squares highlighting dart squares here this a3 and now b4 the bishop dropping back hitting the bishop here that's retreated bishop b6 rook c1 queen d8 so black's still a piece up no major problem with black he's still a piece up after f6 though a little bit of hassle with this pin on this diagonal now queen e7 rook f1 queen f7 King h2, knight g8. And now this is a really interesting move, positionally and tactically, queen d2. For me, this reminds me of also the classic, there's a classic game, Alakine against Dimsovich, where Alakine also had this structure and was playing on the dark squares and had the move even queen d2. So these masters are fully aware of the dark square or light square complexes. And their moves are like, trying to accentuate here you know, the, these in this structure, white is trying to accentuate the dark square diagonals. And this move is very, very logical from that regard. So knight g e7. We have g5 trying to puncture this diagonal. <clears throat> trying to undermine, get rid of black's kind of barricade here. f5, and now opening up immediately with g6. So this diagonal ignited again without a pawn on f6. Knight takes, knight g5 with tempo on the queen. Now that knight is pinned, unpinned, and here things get really interesting. Queen d2, the potential of queen d2 to potentially win the game is maximized. This, remember, black's still fine though, even after this next seemingly uh, in, very interesting tactical move. Can you see what white plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, rook takes c6. Yes, it's trying to get access potentially to this diagonal. We're going to see that now after takes b5. So that the whole point of queen d2 is jumping on this dark square diagonal. Black tries to block that. d takes, bishop takes. Now there's a key dark square defender here, this bishop. Really, white wants to eliminate that. After rook c7, black should try and preserve this bishop. And play a move here like rook d8, where black still technically is fine actually with best play. Uh, it's uh, it's it's fine for black, and in fact black's you know got got his own threat. So white uh, should retreat the bishop, and for example, bishop takes g5, and black should be winning. But in the game, fortunately for Morphy, bishop e8 was played, and that exposes 
this dark square defender so strategically and tactically uh, everything's coming together now because Paul Morphy plays in this position he's actually is actually now white net actually now has an advantage after this last move it's a bit of a disaster move can you see what white plays in this position for advantage if I give you five seconds okay I might have tricked you with the arrows not rook takes e7 no because there's a defender take out the defender first though and it's a big difference uh, here h takes uh, g6 was chosen if bishop takes uh, then still rook takes e7 and there's a crossfire on both the dark square diagonals uh, this is why I find the game very very interesting how the masters really uh, exploit you know the, the color complexes uh, so here okay so black played h takes but even so now the log logical move rook takes e7 culminating yeah, in really weakening this diagonal black has the option it seems of taking the bishop which he chose he took he took the bishop but after queen b4 uh, this is incredibly dangerous now yeah dark square disaster for black he gave up his rook uh, this is a pretty helpless position uh, in fact just knight takes h3 was played and black now uh, resigned yeah white's dark square con conquest has succeeded uh, for example queen h7 we can take here discovered check and win that rook with material advantage and a crushing advantage in fact uh, you might think was there any point in in this move actually it could have been taken with the king there's just one spike check and that's it and then here for example you know rook takes e6 as a mating one uh, so yeah it, I thought it was an interesting game to show you just just from the perspective really of the dark square play evident especially with moves like a3 b4 queen d2 which we see later in later eras there's the same uh, kind of placement of pieces to try and really pounce on the dark squares of black's position in this pawn structure so I thought it was a little bit instructive I hope you like this game uh, okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much